At the American Heart Association meeting, Deborah Moser presented the results of an observational study on the obesity paradox. Obese people with chronic diseases have a better chance of survival than individuals with a normal BMI. She looked at some 3,345 patients with stable coronary disease who were followed for two years. We found that patients who are overweight or obese actually have far better survival, so they survive for a longer time, and that's due to death from all causes than patients who are normal weight or who are underweight. Those results were controlled for different variables such as age and sex, but how are we supposed to interpret them? Some people suggest that um, overweight patients have different um, uh, inflammatory cytokine metabolism that might be protective that overweight patients might have better metabolic reserve that serves to be protective when you're sick, that overweight patients with their higher blood pressures and higher lipid levels, actually, that may turn out to be protective once you have a disease. So once you have a condition, being a little bit hypertensive and a little bit hypercholesterolemia appears to be protective. And then finally, there's an interesting finding that patients who are overweight or obese actually receive better prescriptions for guideline-driven therapy than patients who are normal weight or underweight. The study looked at BMI and not at waist circumference. A few months ago, Gabriel Steg presented the RICO registry, a population-based registry led by Yves Cotin and Marianne Zeller. They analyze cardiovascular mortality, broken down by BMI and waist circumference, after an acute myocardial infarction. Their findings were summarized in a paper published in Circulation in July 2008. What they found is that there was a steady and, 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 and stepwise decrease in one-year mortality as a function of increasing BMI, something that replicates other findings that have been consistently found in patients with heart failure that obesity, as measured by BMI, seems to be protective against death in heart failure patients. Interestingly, when they look at the same database and look now across each quintile of BMI or each category of BMI at the impact of increased waist circumference, they find that for each BMI category, patients with increased waist circumference were at much higher risk of death at one year than patients with a low waist circumference for a given BMI. And therefore, there is one category of patients who is at extremely high risk of death at one year, 22% one-year mortality, that is patients with a normal BMI and an elevated abdominal uh, circumference, which corresponds probably to proportionally the greatest amount of intra-abdominal adiposity for a given BMI. So there's, there is some sense in this observation, but this is going to be a very intriguing target for future interventions designed to, pre to prevent cardiovascular deaths and reduce cardiovascular risk after an event. We've just seen a video discussing what looks to be a paradox about the relationship of obesity to cardiovascular disease and outcome. It's been known for many, many years that increased BMI and increased waist circumference predict bad outcomes, it predicts premature death. And yet this study suggests that if you have a heart attack and you have a high BMI, you have a better outcome. This is actually confusing people. And uh, what's your explanation for this confusion? Yeah, it, it is confusing. And people, you know, when you see, when you look at obese patient or adiposity, it predisposes you to heart failure, predisposes you to CED. Once you got heart failure, once you got CED, then it protects you. Doesn't make sense, you know, physiologically, you know, from this physiological point of view. The thing is, it's how you probably express adiposity. When you use BMI in the RICO trial, but to adjust for all the other factor that you know uh, is associated with better or worse survival, then BMI doesn't come out as protective at all. Okay, in other words, it's not as confusing as people think. When they adjust for other things that are going to co-associate with the BMI, the BMI no longer predicts. But what's really interesting is when they look at waist circumference, especially people with a low BMI, a high waist circumference actually predicts a worse outcome, absolutely consistent with exactly. the other evidence. So 
Do you agree? Yeah, I no do confusion agree. at all, really. No, not that, you know, not at all following those data because it makes sense. Yeah. That I having a normal way from a BMI perspective, but higher waist circumference, then you do you do worse because metabolically you're in a wor worse shape. Okay. I mean, the thing that relieves me is to think is to discover that what I had actually believed from the evidence for many, many years, I can still believe. <laughs> that yeah. it is not good to be overweight, especially if the overweight is reflected by an increased waist circumference. Yes, I do agree. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank for you. <laughs>